Welcome to Wasega Labs. In this video, we're going to talk about the IP paging product family, setup, and getting started. Available in single channel or two channel models, each channel of the Wasega IP paging zone controller may be used for audio input or audio output. These functions are configured by the user in the zone controller software. The two channel IP paging zone controller may be configured as two outputs, two inputs, or one output and one input. The IP paging zone controller supports RTP multicast, RTP unicast, and SIP communication protocols. We're going to configure a two zone controller in this tutorial. Before you open the box, take a look at the label on its side. You'll see two MAC addresses listed here. Make a note of these addresses because you'll need them to configure your device in the web pages. Once you open the box, you'll find the installer's guide. It shows what's in the box, what you'll need to get started, how to set up your connections, and dimensional diagrams. Next, you'll find the ferrite clamp. We'll show you how to use this later in the video. The IP paging zone controller itself has line one and line two connections with status LEDs for both on the front. On the back, it has an ethernet port. The bottom of the zone controller has a label which shows the MAC addresses also found on the box label. Note the mounting notches for side or rear DIN rail mounting here. Let's get started with setup. You'll need power over ethernet or PoE, through a PoE injector or PoE capable switch, a remote communication point or what you want to talk to, network cables, CAT5 or CAT6, and audio cables with RCA mono mail connectors. Your zone controller needs both power and data. We're going to use a PoE injector to provide both. We provide power to the PoE injector through a power cord, and data through a CAT5 or CAT6 ethernet cable. We then connect the PoE injector to the zone controller with a second ethernet cable. Next, you'll connect your audio cables. I have a variety of audio cables here to show you several options for connecting to the zone controller. The first cable has a 3.5 mm mini connector for my source's audio jack. I also have an adapter cable with the same connector. Lastly, I have an RCA stereo cable with two connectors on each end. RCA mono cables with a single connector will actually work best with the zone controller, but because stereo cables tend to be easier to find, we'll show you how to make those stereo connectors work as well. The first step of setup is to provide power and data to your PoE injector. First. Use your Ethernet cable, CAT5 or CAT6, to plug into your network. Next, plug in the power cord for your PoE injector. Your PoE injector has both data in and data and power out connections on the front, and a plug for your line voltage power connection on the back. Attach the power cord that you just plugged in. and then connect your data. Take the ethernet cable that you just plugged into your network and connect it to the data in port. Your PoE injector now has both power and data. Now it's time to supply both to your zone controller. Look for the ethernet port marked LAN with the PoE power indicator LED. Connect a second ethernet cable to the port marked data and power out on your PoE injector and connect that same cable to the zone controller's ethernet port. You'll immediately see the PoE power indicator light illuminate, and the status LED will begin to stair step. Once the status LED stops blinking and remains solid green, you'll know that your zone controller is online and ready to use. Now that we've successfully powered our zone controller and connected it to the network, let's make it do something. I'm going to set this one up for two inputs of multicast streaming audio. I've already used the configuration web pages to set both of my device's channels to input and RTP multicast streaming settings. Step-by-step -step configuration instructions are available in your device's user guide, which you can find under product documentation on wasiga.com. I'm ready to connect my zone controller's audio now. I'll be streaming audio from a DVD player on line two and from a laptop streaming YouTube on line one. I'm using an iPhone app for RTP multicast audio streaming 
and it's connected via Wi-Fi to the same network as my zone controller. You can use any device capable of receiving RTP multicast audio streams. The cables I have on hand happen to be RCA stereo cables, but I can still use them for this particular application since I'm not streaming high quality audio. If you are streaming music or other high quality audio, make sure that you use mono cables or adapters so you don't lose any sound quality. For my cables, I'm going to attach an adapter so I can plug into my TV's headphone jack, and I'll use just one of the two RCA connectors to plug into line two of my zone controller. My RTP multicast streaming app now receives the DVD audio and plays it at the touch of a button thanks to my zone controller. To demonstrate line one, I'll play a YouTube clip on the laptop. The cable I'm using is the one with the three and a half millimeter headphone connector on one end and the RCA stereo connectors on the other end. First, I'll plug into the headphone jack and then like with the other input, plug in one of my two RCA connectors to the zone controller. Now, my streaming app can access both my YouTube clip and on line two, it can access my DVD player. I have two zones of streaming audio from one device. Finally, we'll install the ferrite clamp. The ferrite clamp is an EMI filter that ensures optimum sound quality by suppressing any line noise that might be present. Place the clamp within four inches of your connectors, position the cables in the indention, and snap it shut. This guarantees the best possible sound quality for your application. We've now completed the installation of your two input zone controller. More options for the same zone controller include two outputs or one output and one input. You can see more information on those configurations at wasiga.com. If you have questions regarding applications, other products, or need more information about the zone controller, please contact us at wasiga.com or at 1-888-509-2379. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining us.